Good evening, everybody, uh, and good afternoon to the United States. Welcome to Delft. Um, on behalf of uh, Royal Delft and the Netherlands Board of Tourism and Conventions, I welcome you tonight. Uh, and to start off this, uh, this program, we would like to uh, show you a little clip about Delft. Please enjoy. Delft, near The Hague and not far from Amsterdam, has traditionally been the city of great minds, of pioneering inventions, the city of lighting and innovation. Did you know that the microscope was once invented in Delft by Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, who was friends with the famous Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer? His whole life he was inspired by the Delft cityscapes and the inhabitants of Delft. And did you know that the most famous girl without a name is also from Delft? From this beautiful, colourful city, but also the city of blue. Delft Blue, the classic colour that links the bright history of Delft with the future. Welcome to Delft. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little clip we made on uh, the beautiful city of Delft. Uh, tonight with me is Edo Anso. He's the sales and marketing manager of Royal Delft. Edo, um, very glad to be here. Happy to have you. Thank you very much. Um, we are in a very special place. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Royal Delft uh, uh, in a minute. But I would like to start off with the city of Delft because it's a, it's a very uh, famous city. It's a, it's a beautiful city. Can you tell us a little bit about the city? Of course. Uh, yeah, so we are currently in Delft. Um, I wish I could have you all over here at Royal Delft, but I'm really happy to have everybody engaged uh, in this uh, digital way today. Uh, the city of Delft is a very scenic little Dutch town. Uh, it's officially a, a city uh, between Rotterdam and The Hague. Those are two major cities in the Netherlands. And it's actually just 45 minutes from Amsterdam because the Netherlands is quite small. So everything is uh, quite close to each other. And as uh, the viewers have probably already seen, um, Delft is almost like uh, Amsterdam's little brother or sister uh, with many kennels, um, uh, boats, uh, kennel houses, things like that. It's a city from the 17th century. Yeah, so uh, it's very scenic. Very scenic. Very yeah. Instagrammable. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And much more quiet than Amsterdam. And much more quiet. You can <laughs> yeah. easily walk around the canals. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful. Um, so there are actually a few uh, big icons which are from uh, Delft. Of course, the famous pottery Delft Blue. We are now in the last remaining Delft Blue factory from the 17th century. Uh, so one of the must visits, of course, if you ask me. Yeah, of course. Uh, but other uh, major uh, icons in Delft are, for instance, Johannes Vermeer. Uh, Johannes Vermeer is a famous painting. Uh, his most uh, a well-known painting being the girl with the pearl earring, mm -hmm. uh, which we are going to paint later on in the workshop. Yeah, she'll have a um, prominent role tonight. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And the real picture is actually in the Maritais, which is a beautiful museum in The Hague, the city next to Delft. And that's only 10 minutes or so, is it? It's, it's like 10 minutes, yeah, 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 definitely. So uh, most of the famous works from uh, Vermeer were made here in Delft. Yeah, because he, he was born here, he lived here, and yes. most yeah. of the, the paintings he painted here. So people can actually stand in specific places where Vermeer back in the days yes. painted one of his yeah. famous paintings. He, he, was, he was very much uh, inspired by the surroundings here in Delft. So yeah. another famous painting of Vermeer was um, the view on Delft, yeah. which is a view that you can actually still see. And he did all this, these little tricks in his painting. So if you go to that place, you will see that he actually moved the church in his painting all the way to the left. Okay. Um, so you can find when you go to Delft, you can spot like the differences between the actual scenes and uh, his paintings. And what is there to do on uh, Vermeer in the city of Delft? Uh, so here in Delft, we, uh, most of the original paintings are in the Marwitz House. But here in Delft, we have the Vermeer Center, uh, which is a place where they explain the history, uh, where he used to live. Uh, so more about him himself and about his art and what he did in his paintings that are so clever. Okay, yeah. that's very nice. Uh, another icon, if we, we talk about Delft, it's the relationship with the royal family. 
Yes. Can you look, tell us, tell us yeah. a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not the happiest topic actually. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> the, the Dutch royal family, some of them were buried here. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually visit their graves in the old church uh, and the new church in, uh, in Delft. Uh, which is of course a very interesting place uh, to visit. You can climb the tower of the new church and look on, over the city. This is a beautiful uh, place to go. Uh, with Delft, it's a small town, but there's so much to see. So I would say like, if you go, you can spend a whole day here climbing the tower, going to Royal Delft, uh, but you could also get an image just uh, in a couple of hours, I would say. Wow, yeah. that's nice, that's nice. Um, and then actually being here at Royal Delft, um, yes. You uh, are given the great task to do the sales and marketing of Royal Delft. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you are going to talk and help everybody through the workshop later yeah. on. Yeah. But what can you tell us about this place? Th this is the original place where the factory yeah. has always been. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, this is the original factory where they uphold the traditions of uh, painting hand painted Delft blue. Uh, which started around uh, 1600 when many factories opened in, in Delft and uh, this company was founded in 1653 and around that time there were, Delft Blue was so popular that there were 32 different factories in the city center of Delft. Oh, wow. Um, most of which went bankrupt in the end uh, because this is, has been a long time, you know, it's almost 400 years, but Royal Delft managed to survive. Uh, all this time, so this is now the last remaining factory still upholding the traditions of uh, making hand painted Delft blue. We still have 15 painters working for us. And uh, people can, when they come here, they can experience the painters painting the Royal Delft. Yes, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. So we are now standing in the museum where you can learn more about the history, but you can also, you will always meet a master painter and people working in the factory uh, with their hands. You can ask them questions and uh, learn about Because they're always working life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a good thing to tell the viewers already is that uh, the training for uh, to become a master painter takes 10 years wow so don't worry if you don't get it right right away <laughs> because it takes a lot of practice to uh, become good at it's such even a even longer than a sushi chef so that yes. must be very yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> very difficult <laughs> we call them masters so masters, uh, masters. Yeah. are you going to tell us a little bit about the pros today later on or uh, because it is a special way eh? In yes yeah yeah so we actually um, I can tell you a little bit about it. The, the regular paint that we use is actually black. And when we fire that paint for 20 hours in a heat of 1200 degrees Celsius, which is like 2000 Fahrenheit, um, the black paint will turn blue. And that's because there's cobalt oxide in, inside the paint. But what we did for the workshop package uh, that we sent uh, the viewers is that we've already burned the paint so they have a blue paint at home because otherwise they would have to send it back to us and uh, we would have to fire it and send it back again. Yeah, because to them. Your, so, normal, yeah. Uh, your normal oven at home will not bring no. you up to 1200 degrees. No, probably so. not. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank God not, probably. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so that's why we, we did the clever trick with the paint and uh, they have a set of blue paint uh, at home right now. And yeah. are you actually in the, are, you're, you're not a master? I know yeah. uh, at painting, but uh, how a steady hand? Well, actually, I, I started at Royal Delft, working at Royal Delft about five years ago when I was studying uh, tourism management. Uh, and then I started here as a tour guide and a workshop attendant. So I was trained a little bit by the master painters myself to do the workshops. Uh, nice. So I feel confident uh, okay. helping the people today to, okay, uh, to paint. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you think it's a good time to move over to the workshop? I think so, Explain yeah. Explain a little yeah. bit to people at home what they yeah. uh, should do. So yeah, I hope everybody has their package already. Um, if not, please get it and we'll move on to the, the workshop table. Let's go over here. Perfect. Thank you. Then, sorry, the floor is all yours, uh, Edo. Yes. Um, I see somebody's even in her car, so <laughs> I hope <that> she's uh, <laughs> she's not going to paint. <laughs> um, yeah, so welcome everybody to the painting workshop. Uh, we thought this was a fun way to engage with you on a distance in these difficult times. Uh, we send uh, the packages to your homes, uh, so if you haven't done so already, please unwrap everything, put it on your table, um, and yeah, make sure you have everything here. The only thing that is not in the package yet is a bowl or a glass of clear water. Now, if you don't have that yet, please get a bowl of water and then we can get started. 
If there are any questions in the meantime for you guys at home uh, on Delft, on Royal Delft, you can just uh, ask them. You can ask them live in the Zoom uh, meeting or you can put them in the chat and we'll answer them uh, uh, in between. Um, and if you want to post something on tonight, then please use the hashtag uh, visit Delft, hashtag Delft, hashtag Royal Delft and uh, hashtag this is Holland. Thank you very much. Edo, take it away. All right, so let's go through uh, the things that we send you. First of all, we send you a little box, which, which for you will be folded. Inside that box is the tile you are going to paint. So please open the box, take the tile out, and you will see that we put the outlines of the design of the girl with the pearl earring on the tile already. So this is a tool to help you, so you don't have to fully do it, do it yourself. There is also a shard inside, which is a practice piece. So first of all, we're going to practice with that. Aside that, there is a glaze tile. So this glaze tile is like your pellet. We're gonna put the paint on that. Like I said, you have to get a bowl of water or a glass of water, it's just fine as long as it's clear water. And there are also two types of brushes inside. Now the first brush is the one with a pointy end and then there's another brush without the pointy end. So the brush with the pointy end is the one that we're going to use first to make the lines of the design. So you can put the other brush aside and pick up the brush with the pointy end. Now, we sent you a tiny bit of paint, which is more than enough to do the whole tile. What we're gonna do here is take just a bit of that paint out of the, uh, what do you call this? Cup. Out of the cup and put it on the glaze tile just a little bit. Let's say like a quarter of what we sent you. And then clean your brush in the bowl of water and add that water to the dry paint. What we're gonna do here is make a puddle of blue, dark blue, next to the dry paint. So hopefully the cameras can zoom in on my hands. I'm to glad share I don't, I don't yeah. need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> if there are any struggles, I'm looking at the moderators to, uh, to let me know and uh, I'll be happy to help you, of course. But it's very simple. You just take the brush with the pointy end, put a little bit of dry paint on the palette and add some water to it. Now you want the water to flow, so the whole brush should be filled with paint. Just like this, so the brush is fully blue. Now just put the real tile aside for a moment because we're gonna practice first and take the shard. Now the pointy end of the brush is the part that we're going to use to paint. So we pull it from the top to the bottom with just the pointy end. The thick part doesn't touch the shard. Now this brush is also called the puller, so that means you only pull it towards you. So, like I said, you start at the top and then pull it down. That means that if you would want to make a circle, you need to use two strokes. So, you start at the top, pull it on the left side, and then again start at the top and pull it on the right side to make a circle. If you try to make a circle in one stroke, it will just flip over and you'll get something like that. So just pulling it towards you. Now try doing some straight lines, some curved lines, maybe try to write your name. Um, you'll see that when you write your name, it's very different than using a pen because you only pull it downwards. So you need a couple of strokes to make one letter. Let's see the practice run. Yes. <laughs> and just, just try that out for a bit before we move on to the tile. Now, if you run out of paint, you wanna fill up that brush again, so you stir it around with the thick part in the paint. Now, the thick part of the brush is like a reservoir, so that holds all the paint, and the thin part is what we use, like a pen, to actually paint. So if you're having trouble with keeping your hand steady, use your pinky to keep it straight and try making those lines. You've done this before. Yes, but not for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I hope that was clear for everybody. Um, and we can start moving on to the real tile. Do you want to move on uh, immediately or is it... Uh... Yeah, we can yeah. do this uh, for a bit. So, the tile already has the outlines on the design on there. So, together, we're going to try covering those lines. Doesn't really matter where you start, but maybe for your convenience, start at the left, uh, left top, like you would do when writing a piece. When right-handed. When right-handed, definitely. And you just trace the lines that are already on the tile. Sounds simple, right? You make it look simple. <laughs> I hear the moderators chatting a lot, so <laughs> maybe it's not that simple for everybody. But we okay. just uh, trace the lines. Maybe practice a bit with the corners. So when you move to the face of the girl, you won't have such a hard time drawing that. And you can always use the chart in between if you want to practice some more. So this is the first part of the workshop uh, and the nice. lines. Later on I will explain how to fill in the lines. Um, but we also have some, uh, some questions, I think a quiz prepared for you. Obviously. Um, maybe you should give them a little bit of time to, uh, <laughs> to, to practice. To practice a little bit. Yeah. And then after that we can start with the questions. It's a great way to like, it's almost meditative. And people can actually also buy this kit in the shop if they want to yes. uh, give, some, uh, give a nice present to somebody or, or maybe do it at home. Yeah, we actually, uh, we invented this paint at home kit, uh, especially during the COVID-19 crisis. Okay because we receive a lot of uh, less visitors than we usually do yeah. uh, from foreign countries. So uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can uh, order them in the web shop of, uh, of Royal Delft. Yeah. Very nice, good idea. And the girl with the pearl earring is just one of the designs that we, uh, that we have. There's also a tulip. Um, which is a lot easier actually, but the Netherlands Board of Tourism picked the, the most difficult design. <laughs> <time. laughs> okay. It wasn't me. <laughs> it's the most famous one, right? Definitely. And we're in yeah. the city of Vermeer. Yeah. You want to do a Vermeer, right? Yeah. 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 Totally agree. So remember to pull down the lines, don't start pushing. And just take your time. And then in the meantime, Edo, here on the corner of the table, if the camera can see it, is a very special piece called Proud Mary. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Proud Mary? Because it was only released last year, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. So last year we had the, the, the theme year uh, together with the Netherlands Board of Tourism uh, of uh, Rembrandt and the Golden Age. Yeah, true. Uh, Royal Delft was founded in the Golden Age in the year 1653. And around that time, uh, the Queen of Holland and England uh, was Mary Stuart. And Mary Stuart was one of the biggest fans of Delft Blue and one of the biggest ambassadors at that time. So she was one of the reasons that it became so popular. So we wanted to honor Mary Stuart, oh, wow. and we made a little figurine after her. Um, and because she was a very proud figure, uh, always showing off with her pottery and uh, things and like Dove that. Blue, yeah. And Dove Blue. And Dove Blue. We called her the Proud Mary also, of course, because of the cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of a joke. But Proud Mary is like a collectible. So we have uh, the one that you see over here. There are six different designs. And the clothes are uh, inspired by traditional Dutch clothing from the 17th century. And there are many different designs, so different colors, different hats, but also like different uh, dresses. Um, so you can collect them and switch up the dresses. And, yeah, uh, yeah play because with it's, that. Yeah. it's made of how many pieces? Um, five, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then you can take them out and, yeah. and replace them with other parts. Yeah, that's right. Very nice. Yeah. 
And then to tell everybody at home the good news, this one, that someone can actually win this Proud Mary yes. tonight. Yeah, yeah. And so it will be sent to their home. Yes, we will send it to their home. Uh, and then they can, can start collecting. So yes. it's a good, it's a good, yeah. A good yeah. And we good thought present. it would be a bit rude to, to say the winner would be the one with the prettiest painting. So instead we did a quiz. We, did a little, <laughs> so, we, we prepared yeah. a little quiz for, yeah. uh, for everybody at home. Uh, and excuse me for having my papers over here, but I need to uh, have all the numbers uh, right. Um, to tell you a little bit about the quiz, um, we ask everybody after the question to just answer their, to give their answer in the chat. And then my colleagues will actually look at all the answers and uh, they'll fill it in an Excel sheet with all the right answers. And then in the end, we'll have a winner. So you can, you can also look at the other answers, but uh, just get, it doesn't matter if you're the first or the last, just try and give the right answer. We have uh, a few questions uh, prepared. Uh, but in the meantime, we're obviously also uh, painting. Um, so let's see how this goes. Uh, the first question is an interesting question because in the Netherlands, there are more bikes than people actually. Um, but is that true or false? So everybody, can you um, put your answer in the chat? Do we have more bikes than people in the Netherlands? And I done, then I just wait a little bit for somebody to tell me if there are already answers in the, in the chat. And I have to tell you, uh, before uh, giving you the answer, that everybody obviously knows we have a lot of bicycles in the country. Um, and during the, uh, the last... Uh, crisis or during the crisis we're in right now I uh, think the the, the, the the sales of, of bicycles exploded again and then especially in the e-bikes because now uh, people are, uh, are are cycling more they are cycling uh, uh, far further and people are actually thinking about commuting with with the bicycle as well so if you want to order an e-bike right now in the Netherlands you probably have three or four months you have to wait to get your bike um, and to give you an idea, we're actually building e-bike highways right now in between cities. So in the, between the city of Arnhem and Nijmegen, there's an e-bike highway only for e-bikes and solely meant for people to commute to their, to their work. Um, do we already have uh, some answers in the, in the chat? Okay, because then I can give the answer. Um, we have about 18 million people in Holland, but we have around 25 million bikes. So yes, there are more bikes in the country than there are people living here. And out of that 25 million, to give you an idea, already 2 million are e-bikes. So that's a very big portion of bikes nowadays. Um, and then to go to the second question, and I think that we already uh, had a part of the answer in the little uh, introduction we had with Edo. Um, the second question is, Delft is a three hour train ride from Amsterdam. Do you think that is true or false? Delft is a three hour train ride from Amsterdam. Is that true or false? And no Googling, no Googling. Is anybody Googling? <laughs> Uh, yes. And Brianna, the judge, is on the left uh, top side. We can see her smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Answers in there, uh, Annika. And Ada already mentioned it because it's false. Uh, everybody knows the Netherlands is a, a quite a small country, and it will only take you by train 55 minutes to go from Amsterdam to actually Delft. And in Delft, you can easily walk from Central Station into the, into the city because the station is next to, next to the city. Um, so the Netherlands is a very compact uh, a city. Um, and to actually travel between the major cities is minimal. And to give you an idea, from north to south through the country by train will only take you about five hours. And from east to west, only two hours. So it's a small country but we have a lot of things to visit in this small country. Um, 
Then the third question, 10% of the Netherlands is under sea level. 10% of the Netherlands is under sea level. Is that true or false? It's a tricky one. Everybody <laughs> knows that we're obviously always battling against water. Um, and we're famous for all the, all the dikes that we made. But is 10% under sea level? Is that true or is that false? It's actually false because it's, it's much more. And then you can actually see on my, um, on my uh, print over here that Brianna helped me with these questions because she gave a little answer to it and she says a whopping 26% of the country is under sea level. So that's a quarter of the country which is under sea level. Um, then to the fourth question, and that's on Royal Delft again. Um, Royal Delft was established 100 years ago. Is that true or is that false? And this is another test to see if people were listening to us, yes. Edo, earlier yeah, 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 tonight yeah, yeah. or this afternoon. I already see the answers coming in. And of course, it's false, Edo. Of course. Of course. It was Almost already 400 years yeah, ago. <laughs> it was already established, <laughs> and that's here in 1653, if I'm correct. Definitely, yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's the only remaining factory where they make the famous Delft Blue. Um, and then another question, and that's actually to do with what you're doing right now. And that's a multiple choice question. So you can just type in A, B, C or D. Um, what is the secret ingredient of the original black paint that turns blue during firing of Delftware? What is the secret ingredient of that paint? Is that answer A, cobalt oxide? Is that answer B, titanium dioxide? Is that answer C, zinc oxide? Or is it answer D, magic? I think it's D. Could be <laughs> D, could be yeah. D. Mm -hmm. So what is the secret ingredient? Is that answer A, cobalt oxide? Answer B, titanium dioxide? Answer C, zinc oxide, or answer D, magic. And Harriet is all for the magic. With that, we should we should <laughs> put that as, in as correct. Uh, and as Edo already told earlier tonight, and everybody was actually listening to us, Edo, I because so they much. all I didn't know about these questions. <laughs> yeah, actually, they, yeah. they all remembered that it's yeah. answer A, cobalt yeah. oxide. Okay. I think they're still working on it. So, <laughs> in the meantime, how are we doing? I'm just looking at the videos behind me. How's everybody doing with, uh, with the lines and the questions? This is really a challenge we gave you. Oh, look right. at that. Look at that. Wow. Oh, you were. Oh, yeah, great. Wow. Great. Yeah. Nice. Some of them don't look quite so ready yet. But even if you're not fully ready with the lines, um, we can move on to the second part of the workshop and explain to you how the other brush works. So the brush without the pointy end, I hope you've kept it uh, clean because we're gonna use it with clear water. So if you haven't kept it clean, just uh, wash it off in the bowl. Um, and if it's still clean, just dip it in the bowl of water without going over the bottom because there's paint there. Uh, just make it a bit wet and make a puddle of clear water in the right bottom corner of your plate. So again, on the glazed plate, you're gonna put some clear water there. Just dip it in the water like three or four times and make a puddle of water. Now we're gonna start off by doing the lightest possible shade of blue that we can make. So just dip it in the other puddle a tiny bit and mix a tiny bit of blue through the clear water to make a really light shade of blue. 
bit more water. To, if you add more water, this will get clearer, so lighter. And if you add more paint, this will get darker. If you made a bit too much of a mess, just take a bit of the blue paper that the shards were in and uh, dip off your plate a little bit. Thought of everything. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> now, let's move back to the shard for a little bit to do some practicing. Um, this brush is a bit thicker, so keep that in mind, but the movement is kind of the same. So you, again, uh, you start at the top and then pull it down. Practice on the chart and see if you made a really light shade of blue. Now you will see that at the end of a stroke, you will leave a little bit of water, like a droplet of water. That's um, actually also how you can tell that something is, uh, something is really hand painted. So that's not a problem at all, that there's a little bit of water there left. Now. Just try that out. Because this brush is a bit thicker, we use the whole brush, so not just the tip of it. Um, and of course, if you push this brush a bit firmer, you will get a thick line. And if you push it lightly, you will get a really thin line. Now what we're gonna do when we color the lines that we just made is first do all the light shades of blue. So the light shade of blue, we're gonna keep that before making it darker and try using it on the actual tile. Now this is the tile I made. And I'm just gonna see like how I wanna color this. And don't be afraid to paint, you know, just, uh, just go over it. it. It's okay, it doesn't have to be exactly between the lines. But the lines, they, they dry already quite quickly then. Quite quickly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you see now I've uh, just added some paint and then if you've done all the light shades you will try making this a little bit darker so we're going to use the same puddle um, and just add some paint to it, not too much, I've actually used a bit too much so I'm going to add some more water. With this blue paint you can make like maybe six different shades of blue so Try giving it, giving it a bit of depth by uh, using these different shades of blue. You can use the whole palette if necessary. And they can look at the example a little bit as well, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And just uh, feel free to paint, make it your own little artwork. So actually now you can use both brushes, so feel free to make more lines and all of that. Um, of course, this is only the girl with the pearl earring. Feel free to put your name next to it or anything else uh, when you want to. And then when finished, people need to lay it down to dry, not, not put it upright. Directly, I can imagine. Uh, well, actually, this tile is very porous, so, okay, so it, 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 it uh, absorbs the water absorbs quite the, quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to go over it with your hand like that right now, but it actually, it's uh, quite quick. Quite quick to wow. dry. Yeah. It's very nice. I might buy this one off you. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty euros. <Yeah. laughs> How are we doing at home? Everybody working hard. I see some yes. sweat drops already. There should be a sweat drop as well on the, on the tile. Of course, when you, when you actually visit uh, Royal Delft, you can do the tour uh, and visit the factory and the painters and the museum. Uh, but you can also do this. Uh, so you can do the actual workshop. And when you visit here, you can even do it with uh, the original black paint and we will fire it for and you. And then you home. put it in the oven as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you can even make the, uh, the original blue. Then they do the tour afterwards and then when they come back or something, then the, the tiles are... Uh... Well, not quite uh, yet because okay. it has to be and fired for 20, 20 hours. 20 hours, yeah. 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 So the tour is not that long. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. You could stay in a hotel or something. Yeah. <laughs> Usually <laughs> we ship it. After. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Usually we ship it to, uh, to the country they're from. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. nice. Very good. And then the end of the tour, there is obviously the 
the shop. There's the shop, of course, yeah. yeah. And that's where it gets crowded, right, normally? Usually, yes, yeah, when allowed. And when allowed, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, the shop is a really interesting place. I, I, I heard people saying it was a Walmart of Delft Blue, yeah. <laughs> which I don't know if it was a positive thing or not, but it's definitely, you can find anything Delft Blue that you would like to But there are so many in, varieties uh, because yeah. people yeah. in their heads, normally they only have one type of Delft Blue, but there's yeah. so many different varieties yeah. and even quite modern ones as well, you know, yeah. uh, that you made over the, over the last couple of years. Yeah, definitely. So there's like, of course, all the traditional ones with the traditional uh, Dutch landscapes, uh, flowers, things like that. And usually the uh, American visitors that I get uh, are very fond of the traditional work because it holds so much uh, tradition and value, of mm. course. Yeah. But there is many uh, modern pieces as well, like, like the Proud Mary that uh, the winner is going to get, but also like uh, tableware. Yeah. Uh, new plates and things like that with which is kind of like a mix because we use like old elements like the peacock and, and flowers but we use it in more modern shapes and, and, and things like that uh, and even for some of these dinner sets we work together with Dutch modern artists like for Dutch instance designers. Uh, Dutch designers like uh, Marcel Wanders for oh, instance nice. yeah I don't know if people know him but he's been working also with the KLM uh, so yeah and then people actually eat from Delft Blue at home. Yes, yeah. They yeah. dare to, to eat from Delft Blue, yeah. you sh or you should actually use yeah, it. Yeah, and we, we still, yeah, we, we want people to use it, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it shouldn't just be a relic uh, that is uh, somewhere in your attic. You know, no, that's no you want to be relevant as well, uh, again, yes, yeah. to, to bring yeah. beautiful stuff to, the, to yeah. the table. And that's that's actually, like I said, before there used to be like 32 different factories in Delft and Royal Delft was the only one to survive and the way they did that is by always innovating. Uh, so even in the 19th century or the 20th century they made a collection with black like Delft black and Delft red uh, to show people something different. Yeah. Uh, and nowadays we use of course mostly the blue but even with modern designs to show people like it can be something of this day and age as well. Yeah because yeah. Uh, over the decades and, and, and centuries taste already changes as well. So yes. I, yeah. I can imagine yeah. that you uh, go along with that and try yes. new things. Yeah, if you exist long enough, you will be retro yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> by uh, some time. Yeah. But, and we, we see that very much. There's a Delft Blue trend, like uh, we saw some um, uh, British, uh, um, I, th I think the Fina Financial Times published uh, uh, an, an, uh, an article, article. Uh, this week about the trend of Delft Blue. So you see that like, yeah. if you exist long enough, people will think it's, we'll uh, it's cool again. again. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. yeah, but even, even with the traditional pieces, so this is, uh, this is nice to see. Yeah, nice, it's very still nice. being valued. Okay, we have uh, a few uh, questions left because we're not giving away Proud Mary that easy. Um, so you do need to uh, put in a little bit more right answers. Um, and we are at question six, everybody. And that's a real Dutch question. Because each Dutch person eats about seven pounds, and that's uh, over three kilos, of cheese every year. Is that true or false? Every Dutch person eats about seven pounds, that's over three kilos, of cheese each year. Can you imagine if you put three kilos of cheese on this table and then everybody eats that every year? Is that true or false? And I'm going to surprise a, little, a lot of people because it's actually true. We, we do I eat three that. kilos of cheese. <laughs> I, I, I eat maybe four or five kilos. Yeah. So you can I didn't want eat to say one, you <laughs> eat one kilo and I yeah, eat five. Yeah, um, but it's, it is true because we love our cheese. And, um, uh, and actually, it, obviously, you can buy it everywhere. But it's also one of the most important reasons to actually come to Holland. Because the real farmer's cheese is still made in the country, in the farms. So if you're here... Uh, you need to try and buy the farmer's cheese uh, and the reason why you should eat it here is that it's um, the traditional way is made out of raw milk and that way we cannot export it to every country so that's why we only make it and sell it here in the Netherlands so that's a good reason for everybody to come to Holland um, then question seven is on the famous Johannes Vermeer um, he's also called the master of Dutch light 
Uh, we also we already told you that he lived in Delft. Um, and when living in Delft, this is a true or false question, he made over 300 paintings in his lifetime. Is that true or is that false? Here we go. Are there... How is your Vermeer knowledge? We have a little bit of a mixed bag. It is actually false because Vermeer only made 45 paintings during his life and uh, only 35 remain. So yes, there are only 35 you can actually yeah. see. Um, but as you know, he's still celebrated in books and music uh, to this day. And as we already told you earlier tonight, uh, in the famous Maritz House in The Hague nearby, that is where the, actually the, the, the girl with the pearl earring is, uh, is on display. So um, a must visit uh, when you are in the Netherlands. Um, and then question eight, um, and this is a tricky one. We have a lot of cities with canals and as you can imagine, Amsterdam has the most canals. But which Dutch city after Amsterdam has the most canals? This is a multiple choice question. Answer A is Utrecht. Answer B is Delft. Answer C is Leiden. And answer D is Haarlem. And I can already reveal that each of these cities have canals. But which one has the most after Amsterdam? Is that answer A, Utrecht? Answer B, Delft? Answer C, Leiden? Or answer D, Haarlem? Let me just give a little tip about the lips of the girl with the okay, <laughs> pearl yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah, please do. Please um, because do. I noticed that, that they are quite small. So if you haven't colored them already, maybe use the brush with the pointy end that we use to make the lines to fill in the lips and the eyes of the girl. Because otherwise the, the, the other brush, the filler, is a bit too thick for that. So hopefully you haven't done that yet, but maybe this can help you. Good tip, good tip. Okay, then we go back to question eight. I see B, C, Utrecht. The actual, actual answer, you might think it's Delft because we are in Delft, but that's not the answer. The correct answer is answer, is answer C, Leiden. Because Leiden has as much as 28 kilometers worth of waterways in the city. So that's answer C. Um, then we go over to question nine. Tulip season, famous, obviously. Kokenhof is uh, nearby as well. Yes. But we have more, much more uh, flowers uh, in, in the Netherlands. But the famous tulip season in the Netherlands, uh, this is a true or false question. It runs from only the end of March to mid-May. Is that correct or is that incorrect? So tulip season in the Netherlands runs from the end of March to the mid of May. What is your answer to that? Whoop whoop is not one of the answers. <laughs> oh, we can actually see. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, answers. we can see. Yeah. <laughs> I see a lot of true, and that is correct. And to give you an idea that we have much more flowers than only the tulips in the Netherlands, uh, we start with crocus season in March which is followed by daffodils and hyacinths after the crocuses. And then finally the tulips, they show their gorgeous colors, usually from the end of March through the first weeks of May. So that's question nine. And then we already go over to the last question of my uh, little pop quiz over here. Great. And you're uh, about to... Uh, I'm almost done actually. You're almost yeah. done over there. So question 10. Another one of our most famous artists. So we have Vermeer, where we are uh, right here in Delft. 
But um, another big painter, obviously, is Vincent van Gogh. Um, and this is a true or false question. The two museums with the largest Van Gogh collection in the world are located in the Netherlands. So the two museums with the largest Van Gogh collections in the world are located in the Netherlands. Is that true or false? You know the answer, Edo. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Looks nice, looks good, looks good. Good knowledge, everybody at home, because it is true. Of course it is true. Um, everybody knows the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, um, but right after we have the Krüller Müller Museum in Otterlo, which is in the center of the country a little bit. And that's the second biggest collection of Van Gogh works um, uh, in the world. Uh, so the Van Gogh roots are very strong in the Netherlands. He was born here and he lived a large part of his life, of his life in Brabant. Uh, and again, um, uh, when you are interested in Van Gogh, you can actually look at a painting in the morning. For instance, the, the, the painting he made, the famous painting about the church, which is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. And then in the afternoon, you can actually look at the same church, which is, which is still there in Brabant. So that's a really, a really nice way to experience Van Gogh when you are in the Netherlands. Uh, those are my uh, questions. Uh, I hope that the jury, uh, the jury is still out there. Brianna is uh, typing in all the answers in their in her Excel sheet. Edo, can we have a uh, can we have a look at your uh, outcome? Definitely, yes. <laughs> and do I, have, I would like have... to see uh, uh, the other paintings as well, of course. Yeah. I'm very curious. I, I gotta say, I'm not a professional, of course, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, I'm confident to show it. Yeah, your colleagues are watching as well, probably. So yes. They, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They <laughs> will see this. Yeah. <laughs> I will need to take some classes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the result is quite uh, okay. I hope yours is as well. Maybe people who are almost done can uh, can show it. Wow! Look at look behind you. Yeah, great. Nice. Well done. Wow. Yeah, some of them are really beautiful. Oh, she would, even painted the church and everything. I wow. would be really surprised if yeah. the lady in the car would now held up her uh, little... Uh, oh, he, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the gentleman on the right is a real uh, Vermeer, you see, with the church and... Uh, and I see some, uh, I, I see a proud Mary over there already, in some yeah. yellow blue. So yeah. there's a collector yeah. who wants to have the, <laughs> the, the prize. Exactly. Wow, very nice, well done. Yeah. Catherine, well done. Great job, guys. Very nice. Well done. All right, so for the last part uh, of the workshop, I will show you how to use the box. It was already in the box, so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, now you just want to put that box down and place the tile on the box uh, upside down, so facing the other way, and then just fold the sides and then the long sides as well and put it in. Now the nice thing about this box is that it will keep it safe because we didn't glaze the tile because uh, it didn't go into the kiln of course. Now you will have it like this and the nice thing about the box is that it's also um, a standard. So if you fold the back side out you can use it as a stand. Oh, nice. You can use it as a stand on your desk. You keep it on your desk. Exactly. Very cool. Well done, Edo. And if, if it wasn't pretty, you can just put the Replace example. Replace that one. Yeah, you can <laughs> yeah. put that in front of it. I'd, I'd probably do that at yeah. home. And look, look what I've made. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So, um, maybe this is a nice time to see if there are some questions. Uh, at home, is there anybody who wants to ask a question? You can either do that live in the Zoom meeting or you can put it in the chat, either being in YouTube or in the Zoom meeting. Oh, we have a comment from Helen, which is, who's at home, unfortunately. Yes. Well done, everyone. Yeah. They look great. People still working on the last parts. Actually, Catherine is making pictures already. Looks good. <laughs> I see a, a question about Delft. Yes. Um, Can we? Uh, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Currently, 
are the main sites of the city open to the public, like the Vermeer Center in Delft? Are they open? Yes, yeah, yeah. As of current, uh, they only had to close in uh, April and May, like we did as well. But now the government had, has decided to keep the museums and cultural activities open. Okay. Uh, of course, you need to make a reservation. Uh, beforehand uh, through time slots, uh, but you, uh, for the most part in Delft, uh, there's still plenty of room to uh, to visit the, the attractions. attractions. Yeah. Okay. And then over the obvious the obvious question: When can we come to Delft? When always welcome. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> I think you need to ask your local government. Uh, yeah, <laughs> about uh, that. Yeah. yeah, when when it's safe again to come and travel. Yeah. Um, and then Harriet asks, I was curious about the items on the shelf behind you. Is that the shelf here we have behind us, Harriet? Probably is, because you have a beautiful cabinet behind you. Which this is the is, cabinet. Uh, yeah. This is our uh, most valued antique collection, uh, which used to belong to King William III. Um, and he, like many kings of the Netherlands, was a big fan of Royal Delft and of Delft Blue. Um, and he gave it to Royal Delft in his time to inspire other painters and uh, yeah, show how beautiful it could be uh, to the people of the Netherlands. So he gave it back again? He gave it back, yeah. Okay. And the wow. in interesting thing is actually that most of these pieces were made in other factories, uh, <laughs> not by Royal Delft, but it of course inspired uh, us and it, they were all made in Delft. So this is really a vast collection where you can spot like the whole history of the Delft potters. And uh, interestingly, you can, uh, there's not just blue and white, like I said before, they used to innovate even in that time with colors and other, uh, other collections. So you see some multicolored pieces there, yeah. uh, there as well. Yeah, very nice. But that's for everybody to actually come and see when they yes. are here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, then we see. Uh, is that a room that the public gets to visit? Yeah, right. Because yes. it, it's yeah. in the museum, right? So yeah. everybody can come here. Interesting fact: it it didn't used to be actually. Okay. We have the beautiful uh, replica, fully hand painted, of the Night Watch on on my side, which is made of four hundred and eighty different tiles. Um, so that's something to see, and this is uh, part of the tour. Uh, so when you come and, and uh, we have a tour guide for you, or you have an audio guide, this is uh, some of the places that you will Perfect. visit. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, and then this is an interesting question. Okay. Is there a special Delft cheese? A Delft cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that's a clever question. I don't question. know there's a specific, I, is there a specific Delft one? I, I don't know if they went as far as cheese in Delft, but I do know that they made butter. Okay. This was actually the city of butter, so maybe we just stopped at the butter. And, and then the uh, ate all the butter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that, that might be an answer yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, why do you think that Royal Delft survived when the other 31 potteries didn't? Interesting question. Um, yeah, so actually, uh, like I said before, it's, it's really because of innovation. So uh, we, of course, it wasn't just around the time that the other factories didn't survive, but we also survived two world wars, we survived many crises, we even uh, survived the Spanish flu, so this is not our first pandemic. Uh, <laughs> you're, not afraid of, you're not afraid of it, you can, you can yeah, handle it. Yeah, no, but I think that's it, innovation uh, and keeping the interest of the public. Okay, nice, yeah. very good. Um, is there any street art in Delft? Is there a street, street art festival, anything? It's actually a trend, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have, um, we, we recently did an exposition with a tattoo artist, yeah. uh, which was a very interesting uh, collaboration with Hank, Hank Schiefmacher. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a famous Dutch tattoo yeah. artist. Yeah, he, he, he looked at like the unpainted uh, vases and plates here and he made some very Schiefmacher, but also Royal Delft designs. So he collaborated with our painters. Um, so this is not uh, street art, but it's, it's something like uh, yeah. more modern. Yeah. Um, and in Delft, you see some examples of street art. Also with uh, with Delft Blue, there's a, there's a big wall in the city. So you see okay. that popping up uh, okay, so in some it's, places. It's yeah. coming into trend. Yeah. Um, is there a virtual tour of Royal Delft online? Um, 
Well, on the website there, we, we did something with like the VR. Uh, yeah. So you can actually, there's, there's VR pictures. Okay. So when, oh, you can even open it on your iPad and you can look around like that or, or on your computer with your uh, so, mouse. So uh, let's yeah. say a 360 degree uh, uh, yes. images and yeah. stuff. So you can find that on royaldelft.com. So you can take a look at the rooms like the, the one that we are in now. Okay, interesting. Um, but not yet like a tour, a full tour, a museum tour. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, oh, there's a Delft blue cheese made by Henry Willig. <laughs> so we correct. Somebody yes. is correcting us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Henry Willig store in Delft. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Um, and then, yeah, again, what are the hashtags we should use? You can uh, use uh, hashtag Delft, hashtag Royal Delft, hashtag Visit Delft. Uh, obviously, you can add hashtag visit Netherlands or visit Holland, um, whatever you want to use. Um, is there any other questions? I believe not. Do we have questions? Uh, no, in the YouTube chat? Okay. Oh, they're in this chat as well. Okay, very nice. So, I think, Edo, it's uh, about time to wrap up. Yeah. I hope that everybody, uh, everybody enjoyed it at home. Um, and then we come to the moment supreme because the winner, the winner of, yeah. of tonight. And Annika is actually, like in a professional TV show, now handing me the winner of tonight. And do you want to actually, you, I, I, would, I would like to give you the honor yes? of, to, okay, okay, okay. of announce the winner I of hope tonight's it's an easy name. grand prize, the Proud Mary. All right, all right, all right. So. Maybe I can tell where it's going to first. Oh. <laughs> so maybe there will be some people in the running still. Our beautiful Proud Mary with the peacock is going to New York. Wow. And it's going to Peter Trippy. So Peter. Peter! Congratulations! <laughs> Ah, I see him, yeah. <laughs> With a so Dutch excited. lion. We have a fan, we have a fan. We have a Dutch lion. <laughs> Great, That's all right, fantastic. Peter, congratulations, congratulations with your Mary. And, uh, well, the rest of you, of course, have your other souvenir uh, to think about us. And I would like to thank you very much on behalf of Royal Delft. And when it's possible, again, please visit us. Take a look at our web shop, royaldelft.com. And... Uh, Hope to see you soon. It was a it was a pleasure being here. It was uh, something completely new and different. Actually, doing a painting workshop. I already saw some great comments uh, there that the people at home enjoyed them enjoyed themselves as well. I hope we brought some cheer uh, to everybody at home and to uh, connect a little bit with Delft and the Netherlands. Edo, thank you very much for being uh, for us uh, being here. Um, and uh, I hope that everybody at home comes soon and enjoys uh, your beautiful Royal Delft and the city of Delft and the Netherlands, obviously. Have a great evening for the US. Have a great afternoon. Thank you for being in this workshop and we hope to see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> Waving. <laughs> Delft, near The Hague and not far from Amsterdam, has traditionally been the city of great minds, of pioneering inventions, the city of lighting and innovation. Did you know that the microscope was once invented in Delft by Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, who was friends with the famous Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer? His whole life he was inspired by the Delft cityscapes and the inhabitants of Delft. And did you know that the most famous girl without a name is also from Delft? From this beautiful, colourful city. But also the city of blue. Delft blue. The classic colour that links the bright history of Delft with the future. Welcome to Delft. <laughs>